Now that you're done with your pressure lab and your convection lab, we wanted to go through and highlight how pressure up relates to weather. Because it's one thing to understand pressure, the hard part is now applying it to our end goal, which is to understand how pressure affects weather. As you go through this screencast, you're going to want to take notes on this document that you've hopefully already made a copy of. At the end, I'll help you out with any areas that you might have missed. First question, what is pressure? I wanted to relate pressure to something you've probably experienced, and, and for me, that's diving deep in a pool. I know that when I go deep underwater, I feel pressure pushing on my ears and my head, and it's a really easy way to understand how water is above your head pushing down on you. Another example I thought of was in a submarine. Submarines have the ability to only go down a certain depth underwater because if they get too deep, there's too much water above them pushing down on them and then crushing that submarine. Specifically, air pressure is a force exerted or pushed by molecules in the atmosphere due to gravity and temperature. These are the two components that affect air pressure. A lot of times we think about altitude and we think, okay, the lower I am in the atmosphere, the more particles there are above me pushing down on me. However, temperature also directly affects air pressure. Earlier this year, we learned about particle motion and temperature. We talked about how cold air particles are close together and have the ability then to push harder on objects. So typically, colder air, since the particles are more packed, have the ability to push harder on an object. So we would classify cold air as a high pressure system. Hot air or warmer air, the particles have more energy and more spacing, which causes them to have the ability to push a little bit less. So typically we would classify hot air as low pressure systems. This is generally true, but not always. How do we measure air pressure is in the next section. For your notes, make sure you're following along with that. We use something called a barometer. And a barometer measures how, how hard the air is pushing down on the, the gauge. You can see in this image that the air pressure is pushing down on HG. This HG actually represents mercury. And mercury is a, a, an element that can cause um, health problems if you ingest it or if you hold it. So they actually stopped using mercury and now we use a different liquid to measure air pressure. Here's an idea of kind of how air pressure works. Eat, we fill it. Fortunately, he turned out to be wrong. A vacuum is a key component of the barometer an instrument for measuring air pressure. And because air pressure correlates to temperature, and rapid shifts in it can contribute to hurricanes, tornadoes, and other... So you can see here, I just want to highlight, as the weather changes and the pressure changes, the gauge of the barometer goes up and down depending on the weather. So barometers are a really good gauge to understand how weather works. For extreme weather events, a barometer is one of the most essential tools for weather forecasters and scientists alike. If we pay attention to the barometer reading, it can tell us if the air pressure is rising or going down. And as we see these changes happening, we see, uh, we, for example, if we see the, the air pressure going up, that means a higher pressure system is coming in. And that's a good thing for us for weather because high pressure sinks, pushes out the clouds, and creates blue skies. Whereas if a low pressure system is coming in, we know that low pressure air is less dense, so it rises, it goes up, and it creates clouds and then precipitation. Let's check out this meteorologist and how he explains this exact same thing. So we're talking high pressure and low pressure. She's saying, why is high pressure associated with clear skies and light winds and low pressure associated with storms and rain? Well, 
We're going to put it together, put it uh, together this way. You have to look at weather as three-dimensional. That's the key here. That was one of the most difficult things when I went to college when they started talking about the weather in three dimensions. I was so used to staring at weather maps that I'd see in the newspaper here um, down the ground. But everything at the ground is occurring by what's happening aloft here. So let's look at the gesture. This is the gesture in here. And this is high and low pressure here. Now you have to understand the water cycle too. Water cycle is as air rises, it will cool and then condense because it, reach, it encounters lower pressure. So the higher air rises, the pressure goes from high pressure to low pressure. We have less pressure, less temperature, it cools, condenses, makes clouds. So wherever there's rising air, we get precipitation. This is what's happening in the jet stream along. Here we'll have a convergence zone along here. That's the jet stream winds are coming together. So if you push the air together, it has nowhere else to go. It can't go up, so it has to go down. So what happens is we have sinking air, and the air sinks, and it sinks clockwise. So it subsides, as we call it, subsidence. As it's sinking, it warms because it encounters a higher pressure near the ground, and that sinking air also causes a big bubble of high pressure to form here. So sinking air near the high pressure warms and dries, and so you don't have any cloud cover out. We had that pretty much during the day today. As jetions going on, it'll encounter an area where it diverges a lot, and so it separates the air here. We can't have a void. We can't make a vacuum with no air. So something has to replace the air right here, and so air comes up from the ground. So what happens is high pressure now has been over here, so that wind comes out of high pressure, it goes into low pressure counterclockwise, it gets to the middle with nowhere else to go, and it rises to fill this void right here. And so near low pressure we have rising air. Rising air will then cool and condense and make clouds and precipitation, so you basically have rising air causing clouds and rain, while sinking air is generally dry as it warms up. When you look at high pressure, low pressure up and down the surface here, you also have wind that, that forms between the two. As I mentioned to the kids, if I take a room and we fill it up with air, we seal it off, and we pump a bunch of air pressure inside the room, then we open the door, the air will rush from high pressure to low pressure outside the door, and because the earth is spinning, it goes around clockwise like this. And so we add a little bit extra here, but generally it's door. There's a spot on your notes for you to, to copy down a picture of high pressure and low pressure systems. This might be something you want to include there. It's a very basic picture, but I want to just, the main idea here is that high pressure air sinks, clears the skies out for a blue, blue sunny day, while low pressure air rises and forms precipitation. This is an oversimplified version, but definitely one I want you to lock in. This is another image that I find very helpful because it helps me see that moving air is not just two-dimensional but three-dimensional. I like this image because it helps you see the big picture if I were looking at kind of a cross-section of the earth, what actually is happening with the air. There's a spot in your notes where you are to write down some main characteristics of high pressure and low pressure systems. These might be some of the things that you should write down. Clear skies, sunshine, dry weather, high day and low night temperatures, calm weather, dew and frost in the morning, or fog and mist in the morning as well. If you need to pause the screen to, to take that down, you could do that now. I also want to point out this reading right here on this image. High pressure, a good reading in millibars is about 1,024 millibars. That, as a reference point for you, which we'll take at, a look at in a little bit, is considered a higher pressure. And as you make your way outward in this diagram, you'll see that the um, each time there's a new circle, those are called isobars, you get, you get a new pressure. So high pressure systems, fair or good weather. Low pressure systems, typically associated with cloudy skies, low levels of sunshine, wet weather, temperatures that are mild for whatever time of the year that it is, windy conditions, and changing weather. Again, if you need to pause your screen, you can do that now. Images I want you to lock in in your brain for low pressure systems. 
big towering clouds, thunderstorms, hurricanes. Think big storms here. In your previous labs on pressure, you made some observations that high pressure always moves to low pressure. This is exactly true for weather as well. As you see in this very simple version of the United States, we see a high pressure system over the Rocky Mountains moving towards the low pressure system. Getting a little more advanced in this picture, we see two pressure systems. High pressure is moving outwards from the center of the high pressure. Low pressure air, and you can see indicated by the arrows here, is moving towards the center of the low pressure system. Again, we have those, they're called isobars, where each different circle represents a different pressure, and we can even read the numbers here. Lower pressure, higher pressure, and you can see those numbers are actually lower and higher numbers. Here's another more advanced model with a little bit more going on than the previous one. You can see here, as we work our way inward to this letter A, pretty clearly A is a low pressure system as those, uh, the barometer reading is also lower. You can take a look over here at letter D. You can see that that is a higher barometric reading. So we know that if you are located at position D, you're probably going to be experiencing a sunny blue sky day. Whereas if you're at position A, it's probably going to be the center of a big storm. Something I'd like you to do is pause your screen real quick and have a quick discussion with your partner. Looking at this, which of these positions or letters would show you a high pressure day, a low pressure day, and what kind of weather would you be expect to be experiencing there? So go ahead and pause your screen now. Here's another model, something that you might see more in the newspaper. Because in real life, there are actually a lot more high and low pressures happening around the United States. We see some high pressure systems here. I would expect to see some blue sky, nice weather. And all of the way around the United States as well, we see these low pressure systems. Again, areas where we would expect to see rising air and most likely storms and clouds. These symbols with the blue triangles and the red circles and the purple half circles. These are, these are symbols we're actually going to take a look at a little bit later this unit as they represent something called a front, and we'll talk more about that later. So what does this high and low pressure cause? Well, big scheme of things, it causes wind. Wind is the actual movement of high pressure air to low pressure air. The stronger the difference in pressure, the stronger the wind. As I look at this picture on the screen, I see a low pressure system right in the middle. And every time I work my way outward from these what we call isobars, we're actually getting a difference in pressure. The bigger the difference between these two numbers, whoops, the bigger the difference between these two numbers, the stronger the wind. We also know that the wind is blowing towards the, the low pressure system because that's how air moves. I want to show you just one last model here of a wind map of the United States. You've seen this model for a couple of our warm-ups, but I should be able to look at this image and get an idea of what kind of weather is happening in the United States right now. I look for today, April 18th, I see the center of what I would expect is a low pressure system. All the air is moving towards it, it's pretty strong winds compared to other places. And so there's probably some storms and clouds happening right here. Here's another great example. Here is a high pressure system. All the air is moving away from this point and the winds are pretty low. If you are right here in the United States, you are probably having a blue sky, beautiful sunny day. Again, over here, also, probably nice blue sky days. The air is moving away from it. So we have, at any given point, high and low pressure systems happening all around the United States.
Here's a recap of all the things that we just talked about, kind of in a simplified version. These notes you can copy down. Now